Welcome friends, in this video we're going to learn about partial derivatives along the y-axis. So again, I'm beginning with what basically appears like a, for example, roof in three dimensions. Remember that here this is the x-axis, that there's the y-axis, and going up and down is the z-axis. Let me zoom in here a little bit. So remember, this is basically a roof, you see that, in three dimensions. In other words, also called a plane in a mathematical language. I put that so that the z-intercept, which is where the corner meets the z-axis, is at 6. You see 7 is right above it. And then probably you can see down below there's a 5, you see? So here the z-intercept is 6, and then the z-axis goes up. And right now, take a look. When you travel along this kind of surface, I'm going to do that right now. Take a look. I'm going to trace here. You see you're traveling along a constant z-value of 6 in this direction, you see? That doesn't change, the way I've set this up at least, because right now, as you can see, it's a level uh, plane. So now the next stage is to actually begin to change these slopes a little bit with respect to the y-axis. So I'm going to do that first. First, the slope is zero, as you see, right? When you look at it from this perspective, you see that as I travel, I'm not going up, nor am I going down. That means that the slope is zero along the y-axis. Look, on the bottom is the y-axis. So when I measure slope here, I'll be measuring with respect to the y-axis. In other words, how much does z change? as I go along the y-axis. So right now, it doesn't go up or down, so the slope is zero. In other words, the rate of change of z with respect to y is zero. So now I'm going to change it the first way. Take a look. And I've changed it clearly. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit so you can see it better. You have to be kind of careful when you make paper models of things, especially by hand. <laughs> right? Paper bends and kind of obscures things sometimes, but you'll still get the general idea. Take a look here. I'm going to snap this into place a little better. There you go. Change the view a tiny amount. When I look at this, this is clearly now like a roof in three dimensions. It's a surface. It's still a plane. And now I'm going to measure the slope. Take a look. So remember, on the bottom here where I'm tracing, that's the y-axis. So I'm going to measure the slope as follows. Take a look. I'm going to begin at the z-intercept of 6. I'm going to count. 1, 2, 3, four five so i went five along the y-axis for every five you'll all go along the y-axis look count now one two three you go three along the z-axis so with the slope in the zy plane for this particular surface would be three fifths it's the change in the vertical divided by the change in the horizontal so that's another kind of slope for example three fifths is a positive value in this case let me see what I can uh, stick in my slope triangle in this position. Take a look to emphasize this point. You see how it fits in there? See that? That's my slope triangle. That's the way I imagine these things. So that's three-fifths. So that's one possible slope, a positive slope. And of course the next one will be a possible negative slope. Let's take a look. So that clearly is a negative slope. What I mean by that, of course, is, you know, you put something there, right? You release it and look. It, it slides straight down to indicate it's a negative slope. And again, to measure that value, begin to say from the z-intercept, and then you can count. One, two, three, four. So four along the y-axis, and then one, two, three, four straight down. So that slope would be negative four. You always take the vertical portion here, okay? So you take the negative four because you're falling this way, and you divide by the horizontal, which is positive four. So the slope ends up being negative 4 over positive 4. Slope is a ratio, so that means the following. Take a look. There's more here. If you look at it very carefully, just study the grid. I'm going to try to zoom in on the grid a little more to get to the essence of it. Take a look. Slope is a ratio, so that means the following. Once I zoom in there, it's equivalent to doing this. I can go 4 to the right and then 4 straight down. But because slope is a ratio, it's equivalent to doing this. Take a look. One to the right. In other words, one along the y-axis and then one down. One this way, one down. One this way, one down. One this way, one down. And because slope is a ratio, it brings you to the same stopping point where you see the number 12 along my pointer there. You see that? And this is then the rate of change of z with respect to y in this case. Remember that this plane, let me zoom out on it. This plane right here. That plane is the zy plane, so it measures, this slope measures how does z change with respect to y. So let me emphasize that point, 
Every time you increase y by 4, z decreases by 4. That's what we mean by the rate of change of z with respect to y. That's equivalent to saying that every time y increases by 1, z decreases by 1. That's equivalent, you see that? Alright, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me. Please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in another physical math video.